Hey there, welcome to the garden. So I'm just popping out here to check on the greenhouse because we got a lot of rain um, today and uh, earlier today, I guess I should say. And so I just wanna make sure that I don't need to water in there. And then I'm gonna go inside and start some of my early flowers. So we are about, we're probably about 10 weeks out from our last frost. Some of these I could have started at 12 weeks, but um, I just wanted to wait a little bit um, just kind of give myself a little bit of extra breathing room, but I'm going to start some coleus, petunias. I'll share that process with you, but I thought I would just check on the unheated greenhouse, see if anything more is coming up in the seeds that I started out there, and then we'll get going on the seeds that I'm starting inside. I am so excited because this is like the beginning of the real seed starting, and before you know it, I'm going to be starting tomatoes and peppers, all of things. So let's just check on the greenhouse first um, real quickly, and then we'll we'll head inside. All right, let's see what's going on in here. All the fishies are hiding. Okay, I'm seeing a little bit of germination on some of the violas, but still the bachelor buttons are really starting to take off. So that is exciting. Everything else looks good. I don't think we need to water. The peas are starting to sprout. That is really cool too. I don't see anything on the strawberries. And my foxglove, everything's doing good. Over it's here. been much cooler and now yeah, the greenhouse, I think I said this the other day too, the greenhouse is not drying out um, nearly as quickly as it does when it's like really, really warm out or I have it open a lot and there's a lot of wind when it's closed like this, it actually tends, you can even see the condensation on it. Like it tends to hold humidity pretty well, which is kind of nice. Not much else is going on out here. Um, as I said, we just have been getting a lot of rain and I think this is gonna be a really rainy week for us, which is pretty normal um, this time of year, but it's nice and warm. I just have a light jacket on. It's like 50 degrees Fahrenheit, so that is nice. Okay, enough of the weather report. <laughs> Let's go start some seeds. All right, so we are back inside now and I'm gonna get my seed starting set up um, kind of going and just share with you how I'm going to be starting these seeds and what I'm planting right now. I'm so excited about these varieties. Uh, just some really, really cool things. I was originally just going to start my petunias and coleus today, but I've actually decided to add a couple things in as well. Um, and I'll show you, share with you what those are just, just to get a couple more things going. And I've got some more ideas, um, on what I want to do for containers. I'm definitely still going to get a lot of plants from the garden center, but I really want to do a lot of the flowers in my containers from seed. I just, I just want to challenge myself to start them from seed. So the first thing that I have is just a seed tray here. Um, this is just like an old seed starting tray, nothing special. I have tried all different kinds of things for starting seeds. I've done peat, peat pots, like little six packs. Um, I've got some of like the little plug tray cells. But my favorite thing to use to start seeds, especially when I'm starting them like this early in the year, and I know they're gonna be in these trays for a while. I mean, we're 10 weeks out, even though they grow slow. Um, I, I just don't wanna get in a position where I put them in a little plug tray and then have to pot them up because I just, for me, it's like, I, I, I just, I don't like that process. I don't like potting things up and so, to help prevent that, I'm actually gonna start all of mine in little paper cups uh, for the most part. I have a few things in kind of like some more plug uh, cells and I have a few things in like plastic six packs, especially like out in the greenhouse. But for these indoor things, these are just little paper cups. They're each five fluid ounces. So that really, if I fill that up, that's enough of a soil reservoir that for most of these plants, I'm really hoping I'll be able to get them all the way to the um, the like 10 weeks out point, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'll be able to get them to the last frost without having to pop them up having five ounces of soil because they're all fairly slow growing. My uh, tomatoes and peppers, I'm gonna actually do in like nine ounce cups. I have found that if I start those in nine ounce cups, they have enough of a soil reservoir to also make it the eight weeks that they need to grow without being potted up. Last year I did a lot of plug trays and I just, yeah, I just got sick of potting things up. What I love about 
the paper cups is that they're just really easy. I can write the name of the seedling on the side so I don't have to worry about plant tags, losing plant tags. That's one less like piece of plastic that I'm bothering with and they are just done at the end of the season. They do hold up, you know, you'd be surprised like these paper cups for me, I've never had an issue with them just like, de you know, decomposing before I needed to plant them. By the end of the season, they start to get like maybe a little funky or if there's one that like was sitting in some water in the tray, maybe it'll get like a little bit um, kind of squishy, but I've never had an issue with them being unusable or a problem for the plants. They, they've always held up just fine. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to, oh my gosh, my cat is getting into a box. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Chaos here, girls and cats, it's, it's busy. Um, I'm gonna put a hole in the bottom of the cups and then I'll fill them with soil. And then I'm just gonna start the seeds. I'm gonna try to not over plant these seeds, especially the petunia seeds, because they don't, give you um that many seeds in each one like here is this is an easy wave yellow let me open this up because the petunia seeds they come in this little little vial and like there's only five seeds in there so i'm just gonna put one seed in each cup hopefully um every single one will germinate they're so tiny that even pelleted like i don't even know if you can can see that like itty bitty 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 okay so let's talk about the seeds so this is an easy wave yellow so it's a really pretty kind of like soft buttery yellow if i'm remembering right it has a little bit more of a mounded habit too so it'll be really nice and kind of full in um in containers and it's just yeah this really light um creamy yellow which i think will be nice i'm doing a lot of more like apricots antique tones and so hopefully that yellow won't be too jarring with it and then I have a petunia, a shockwave pink petunia, and this has more of the like lavender tones, kind of undertones to the pink. So it's a bit of a softer pink. It's not really that like bubble gum color. And again, I'm trying to match this with kind of the, the softer, more antique tones of my garden for this year. So that's the goal with this one. Let me see how many seeds I have in here. And again, it comes in, oops, of course I drop it. I think I have, I think I have maybe like eight seeds in there. So I'm just gonna plant all of those. Then I have some Sophistica, Sophistica Blackberry. It's a black petunia. This is gonna be really, really pretty. I can't remember how many seeds they say came in this pack. It's black with reddish undertones. It's just a gorgeous, like beautiful for the fall garden, but also throughout the summer. Ooh, I got a bunch of seeds in here. So that's really nice. And this is from this is from Harris Seed. I've never ordered from the seed company before, but they gave me a lot of petunia seeds, which is really exciting. And I'm, yeah, I, I, I was just so excited to find black petunias. I, I'm gonna plant all of these seeds. I wanna have a bunch. I'm basically gonna fill this whole tray with these, these plants. So I need to kind of divide in my mind a little bit, but I wanna have all the black petunias um, I may, if I have room, I did get this Shockwave purple tie-dye. I would probably do this maybe for like my front yard. I don't, I don't think this look really goes with the kind of general feel of my backyard garden for this season, but it will be kind of pretty in the front yard. So I may, if I have enough space, I may start some of those for the front. Then I'm gonna start a lot of coleus. My biggest, like the most that I'm going to start are going to be these, um, Co Colacha Sunset. Uh, I want to start a bunch. I really pretty much, it has 35 seeds at a minimum in here, and I'm probably going to do, gosh, maybe 12 plants because I want to put these all over in containers. I want to have them in the landscape. I kind of want to just throw them everywhere. Maybe I can't do 12. I always like, I look at this tray, maybe I can't do 12. That might be too much. Eight. We'll see how many I can get. And then I'm gonna do a few of these Mighty Mosaic for the landscape. It's gonna be a really pretty um, mix of textures and colors. I just think it will, again, kind of go with the like antique sort of feel between the two of them. There'll be like a lot of fun foliage interest. 
And I'm going to start just a couple of these giant exhibition lime coleus, which is like a really, really big uh, lime color coleus. I have a few shadier corners of my garden and I found that in those kind of darker, shadier spots, you really wanna put like these bright lime colors because they just brighten it up. If you put more of the reds or deeper kind of colors, they, they, they just get hidden in that shade. So up against the fence where it's shady, I wanna really put in like the bright, bright lime color. And I think that'll be kind of perfect. And then the last thing I am going to do are a couple of uh, verbenas. I have a Brazilian vervain ariensis. Ariensis? Anyways, um, I'm going to plant uh, a couple of each, just like two of this one and two of this one. Uh, I want to put a couple of them in and around the base of some of my tomato plants because the verbena kind of comes up and splays around in these really pretty little clumps of flowers and it's just sort of wispy. So I just want to have a couple. They would be really good in containers too and I may end up getting them some more from the garden center. But I, yeah, I've had a hard time getting these like all the way big and full to flower when starting from seed. So I'm going to experiment with it. But it's one of those that I know I can also just get at the garden center and I know I'll have it flowering. Petunias, I've been able to start from seed and get them up and flowering and, and going kind of at the same like level as the ones that you get from the garden center. But I've had a harder time with the uh, verbena. So if it doesn't work, I'll just kind of scrap that and then just get starts. And then the last one are these um, foxglove, foxy foxglove, and they are a foxglove that blooms in the first season. So that is really, really cool. Um, so you don't have to, usually foxglove, you have to wait two seasons because they're, you know, biannuals and they'll bloom the second year of growth, but not this guy. Um, and these are just like a really, I think these are like that really pretty kind of like peachy pinky color and um, will be really, really beautiful. It says eight to 10 weeks. Uh, so right, right on schedule, uh, with these, absolutely. All of them, like all the petunias are, you can start them at 12 weeks out from your last frost. And then I may do, I may do a couple, um, amaranth. It says six, four to six weeks before your last frost. So I don't know why I felt like kind of starting these a little bit early just to have a jump start with them. I think they kind of, um, they kind of take a little while to bloom, I found, and they do bloom summer till frost. So once they get going, they get really going, but they're really like one that doesn't bloom till midsummer. So I thought maybe I would start them a little bit early. I'm not quite sure how big they're going to get if I do that, uh, but they're really pretty. And so I might just do like one or two of those. And then again, if I have room, once I start laying out all these seed cups, which I doubt I'll really have much, I think I want to do one um, seed holly, like one or two seed holly, seed holly, steel blue seed holly. Why did I say seed holly? Sorry, I'm having a hard time speaking today. Um, but I want to do some of this for in some containers. I started a little bit in the unheated greenhouse, so I have some kind of out there getting started, but I'm not quite sure how that will do. So I want to just do a couple backups in here and just see how they go. And then I'll also probably do a little bit of tarragon. I want to have this for my green stock. Uh, this summer I want to do a lot of herbs out there and they um, they do well being started inside. It's really kind of like the recommended is to start them inside along with some summer savory and some marjoram. Um, all just really nice kind of culinary herbs, super delicious. And I'll just do one little seed cup of each of these and then I'll plant them out into my green stock planter and they'll fill up a nice space in there and that'll be kind um, kind of perfect. So this may take me a little while. I've got you know the girls today and things are gonna be a little busy in here, but I wanted to give you the overview before I jump in and start, yeah, start kind of sewing things and um, get started with the first real uh, seed starting. This is most of the flowers that I'm doing for the garden. About two or three weeks before my last frost, I'm gonna go ahead and seed a few zinnias, some cosmos, do I have any other flowers like that? Those kind of um, more like traditional kind of flowers that you could, could even direct sow. I'm gonna get a little jump start on some of them and seed some of them 
uh, right before the last frost, but this is really all the flowers I'm gonna start for now until we get really close to the last frost. And I think I've said this in other videos, but I'm just starting a lot of like the zinnias, the cosmos, those kind of things inside and in plug trays just so that I can kind of keep on top of my slug issues and hopefully not deal with as much pressure on my seedlings. Um, so I'm trying to, you know, plan to start some of them. Even if I start them in the unheated greenhouse, I want to start them in, in seed trout in seed cells. So that is the plan. Also, I guess I should talk about, I am just starting these in potting mix. I have this really nice, fine, uh, organic potting mix and I'm not using seed starting mix because these seedlings are going to be in these cups for quite a while. I want them to have as much nutrients as possible. I'm going to be feeding them weekly with a really um, like light dilution of fertilizer once they start getting their true leaves. But I just like to have a little bit of something, like a potty mix already has some goodies in here for the plants to eat too. I feel like my seedlings just thrive. Every time I've used seed starting mix, um, I've had a really hard time with my seedlings. So that's the plan for that. And I'm gonna get going on getting these all planted up. All right, I got all my seed trays filled. I'm about to start my seedling. I did think I should mention that when you're using cups, if you use paper cups like this, I don't really bottom water with them. I'm pretty careful uh, about watering around the seedlings. I know the bottom, bottom watering is really ideal. And with the paper cups, you just don't want them sitting in a lot of water. I think if you left a bunch of water in the tray, you might have an issue with that. So I did, I just wanted to make sure that I said that. And now I'm gonna get to, get to planting. All right, I am just watering these in really carefully because all of those seeds were so small that I didn't, I guess, surface sowed everything. I have to say coleus, although it has a teeny tiny seed, it actually is like a really readily, really readily, wow. This is what happens when you have um, babies and you're not sleeping at night. Can't talk, but it, um, it really readily reseeds. I grew some coleus in my, like, I have a second story patio and I had some coleus plants out there and so, I just let them flower at the end of the season and they dropped a ton of seeds in my garden. And even though those seeds are so tiny, you'd think they were delicate and stuff, they were popping up volunteer coleus every which way, growing in between um, the cracks of the pad, like the patio, just, just super, super vigorous. So don't let the small seeds, you know, deceive you. They are pretty sturdy little plants and I've always actually had a really easy time growing them from seed. Uh, it's never been, never been an issue. It's just, you know, gotta be careful with those little itty bitty seeds. So these are all watered in. I'm gonna cover them up with this humidity dome and get them started. And I'll keep you posted on how they grow best day of the year, seed starting day. Um, anyways, thank you so, so much for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.